Hello and welcome to the COVID Hunter show. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the Pittman-Robertson Act and whether there's a viable UK alternative that we could adopt in this country to protect the flora, fauna and wildlife of the UK. The wildlife today is not ours to dispose of as we please. We have it in trust for the future generations that follow us. In the UK, there's probably somewhere in the region of between 600,000 and a million hunters. The last estimate, I'm sure there was something in between uh, the region of four to five million anglers. So let's talk a little bit more about the Pittman-Robertson Act, how it come about and what it is. Essentially it's the Federal Aid and Wildlife Restoration Act of 1937 that governs all hunting and fishing and angling laws in the US of A. It came about in 1937 after Franklin Dean Roosevelt went on a buffalo hunt. He saw more dead buffalo than live buffalo and he decided the time was to act. The key sponsors were Nevada Senator Key Pittman and the Virginia Congressman Absalom Willis Robertson came into effect on July the 1st 1938 and it has been amended many times with several of the major amendments taking place during the 1970s and the most recent in 2000. Essentially, in the US of A, uh, the fee for hunting licenses, tags, and such like, all the money generated goes towards the Pittman Robertson Act, and not a penny or a dime, as it is in the US of A, can be spent elsewhere other than on hunting, conservation, wildlife, and habitat management. In the UK, a similar act could be used to restore animals like the lynx. All wildlife could benefit from an act that's written into law, similar to the Pittman Robertson Act in the UK. Every bird, every insect, every mammal, every fish, everything plays a part in the natural balance of any ecosystem. type of projects funded in the USA and we could mirror the same system in the UK the funds generated go towards PR funds to restore manage and enhance wild birds and mammals and their habitat public relations projects also include providing public access to wildlife resources Unter education, which would be a big benefit in the UK, and development and management of shooting ranges.
as time goes by in the UK, you see in the press, the times are changing. The hunting community, the fishing community, or field sports community in general, are under more and more scrutiny as we move forward. We are a minority population, and I believe that an act similar to this, where we pay a fee for a hunting licence, you pay an income tax on any hunting, fishing related products, that could be clothing, it could be things simply like fishing rods, rifles, ammunition. All that money generated could go back into wildlife in the UK, habitat management. And my feeling is it could justify our sport, our way of life for generations to come. An important part, part of uh, the Pittman-Robertson Act that appeals to me, I can see all forms of hunting, shooting, recreational, field sports, having to be licensed in the future. And the hunter education part of the Act, or the allocation of the funds towards that, could play a big part. I would suggest alongside normal practices in place in the UK at this current time, we could all attend a basic hunter education course. You could learn riflemanship, game preparation, quarry identification, and just a general knowledge from experts in the field about seasons, what's humane, what's ethical. Once you complete the basic course, you could apply for a hunting license. Again, all funds generated from any courses or any licensing system would have to go directly into a Pittman Robertson Act or something similar. And as written into US law, not a penny or a dime of that can be spent anywhere else by central government. It has to go back into the wildlife management, habitat management, and to enhance all different species of animals that we take for granted. I feel this would help endangered species, whether that's insects, mammals, birds, fish, if the funds were allocated correctly. As an hunter, I consider myself a conservationist. I justify what I do by protecting vulnerable species or vulnerable trees, habitat, by controlling pest species. I also like to think that it's done humanely, ethically, and it provides wild meat for the table with no hybrid preservatives or additives. If we don't act now, then the wildlife that we see throughout the world, regardless of species or country of origin, won't be around forever. As hunters, you have the knowledge, the expertise, and you know the wildlife better than any anti-fishing or hunting association because we're out there first hand 
We see things, we feel things. And we have a deeper sense of belonging and a deeper sense of knowledge about our surroundings. A similar act to the Pittman Robertson Act in the UK could justify the field sports community to the outside world looking in at us even more exclusively than they have ever done before. I could hear some people saying we're already taxed on everything that we buy, everything that we own, and I agree. So instead, why don't we use that income tax and change that into a Sporting Goods Act or tax? So instead of paying two taxes, we create a new tax on Sporting Goods instead of the usual VAT or income tax and that is allocated towards our act in the UK. This could help protect the fishing industry and all the animals and habitat that we see on a daily basis. As I said before, everything plays a part in an ecosystem and all the funds generated could go towards this. So let's talk a little bit about the UK territory in general. So the UK area of landmass is approximately 240,000 kilometres squared. Of that, roughly 8.3% is woodland and 82% of it is made up of unbuilt area. Farmland equates to roughly 48.7% and the aquatic environment, inland waters 0.7% and rivers an average of 92 to 93,000 kilometres. The huntable area on average in the UK is 60%. And in the late 1990s, so this these figures will have risen, I've no doubt, roughly 3.3 million people went fishing. I believe the latest figures are between 4 and 5 million people uh, enjoy angling and water sports. Just over 700,000 people shot game and wildlife. Or I would imagine that's up to around about 1 million people in the UK now. And around 15,000 people stoke deer. Over 215,000 people hunted or followed hounds. And 13,000 people participated in falconry. All these areas of field sports support a wider community support local business and big business. The current UK population of people is somewhere in the region of 66 million. Again, in the late 90s, and I'm sure this figure has gone up, around 650,000 people 
were hunters. And that equates to about 1% of the UK population. So this brings me on to the aspect of income generated by field sports in the UK. So again, late 1990s, and this figure will have rose. And these are some of the services that are supported by that income. So a list of trades and services associated with the country sports is extensive. It includes manufacturers and retailers of sporting guns and ammunition, equipment and clothing, game bird rearing, and manufacturers and suppliers of fishing tackle, which includes flies, lures and bait. This also includes bedding, feed, saddlery, Transport, furry, and veterinary support. Contribution to central and local government income includes license fees, that's the FAC or firearm certificate in the UK, VAT, income tax, national health insurance, and sporting rates. I would suggest the money generated from the firearm certificate licences also goes back into the act in the UK we could develop. Instead of going to local government, it could go back into the habitat management of the UK. In the late 1990s, the total expenditure or income generated was around about £6.2 billion per year. Again, field sports and sporting goods sales have gone up. So I would imagine that figure is probably in the region of £7 billion per year currently. Contribution to central and local government income. So total would include licence fees. Again, VAT, income tax, national health insurance and sporting rates generated 655 million per year. Again, that will have probably gone up, but that will have gone back into central government and into the general coffers, so to speak. So rather than that supporting central government, why does that £655 million be spent better and allocated properly to help endangered species, endangered habitat, protected woodlands, sites of scientific interest. Why can't we use that money that's generated and sink it back into these areas and protect the UK habitat and wildlife better?
So let's talk a little bit about as inland waters, as coastal areas. So in the UK, for every one pound of fishing license money was invested in projects, the Environment Agency had to secure an additional £28 to invest in fisheries and angling. During the financial year, April 2018 to 31st of March 2019, approximately 955,000 fishing licences were sold in the UK. This generated an income of £21 million, approximately. And the Environment Agency also received £11 million pounds in grant in aid from central government. So what do they use that money for currently? They use it to check fishing licences, make successful prosecutions and attend fisheries incidents. They also use that money to invest in fish stock surveys, supply and restock coarse fish in inland waterways, and they work with almost 1,700 different agency partners. During that financial year, they managed to invest over £33.5 million in fisheries projects, including partners' contributions and additional government funding. I would say an act similar to the pittman Robertson Act would generate a far bigger income for the Environment Agency to look after and maintain fish stocks, wildlife habitats along inland rivers. In the UK, we're blessed by being an island that we have a complete coastal circumference around our country. When you think of 33 and a half million pound and only 21 million of that was generated through the actual fishing license fees itself and then they have to go hand in cap to local or central government and ask for more money. There would be no need to ask for any additional funding and I'm sure an act in the UK like the Pittman Robertson Act could quadruple the funding for all these areas. I'm convinced that if you're a field sports enthusiast, whether that's through fishing, shooting, or any form of hunting, whether that's on hounds, supporting local business, and I'm sure a new act in the UK was something that you'd be interested in. As I said before, I know there's financial implications to that, but as long as we weren't being taxed twice, and we had a sporting goods tax, or a field sport tax on as products and as an equipment that we buy. And we won't be left out of pocket twice. I'm sure any hunter or fisherman who's a true conservationist would pay the fee required. In any population, in any country, it's always a misuse of firearms and it's always the unregulated people that cause the misuse that gives bad press to the hunting shooting fishing community in general i just feel that we should be licensed but that money should go directly back into our pastimes and the habitat and wildlife for me, that's true justification of where that money is going to be spent. And alongside hunter education and basic firearms training or any training alongside any sort of field sports could be a huge benefit in education, promoting 
our industry, our sport, our way of life, and securing wildlife habitats for all the generations are going to come after us. After all, the younger people in our lives are the future generation in every walk of life. It doesn't have to be field sports. You know, they're going to be as... The kids of today are going to be as doctors, as scientists. I'm sure if the younger generation are exposed to wildlife, to fish management, to the food industry generated through all the field sports nations. It'd make them better, more rounded individuals who have a deeper appreciation for what wildlife is, what habitat management is. They could take that forward. There's a big push on making the planet a greener space for everyone a healthier place for us all to live. And if you understand what's around you in terms of habitat and environment and how important every species of wildlife or insect, mammal, fish is to the ecosystem, it makes you a better, well-rounded person who understands nature, understands the balance between protecting nature and conserving nature which is directly or indirectly the hunter or the fisherman that's in the middle of both them genres. We can leave a better place, a better world for the younger people that are going to follow us through. When you're involved in the outside environment and you spend time in the wilds, whichever country you're living, that solitude gives you time to reflect, sit back and take in what goes on around you. These times when in that period of solitude and I'm just alone in the middle of nowhere essentially I can take stock and understand the world around me it gives me perspective and it gives me a balance that would be hard for the general population to understand in the world we live in everything's about hustle and bustle Everything's about achieving something as quick as possible. Whether that's going to a, a food outlet, shopping online. What I'd advise is that for a while, you leave that behind. You step out your front door. You head into an open space. And you can sit back and reflect and take life at a slower pace for a change. And understand the beauty of everything around us. And find that understanding and that harmony between man and nature. Some of the species you've been seeing in these recent clips, like the lynx, the pine martin, the badger, and these clips, highland red stags. How else would you see these creatures? Only through observation can you understand them. Can you learn about their day-to-day -day lives? And it has to be visual. You have to be a boot on the ground. You have to sit there quietly, 
just observing, taking in all that they do. And only then can you truly understand the wildlife and the habitat, watch the seasons change, understand why the seasons change, and understand what that means for the country and the wildlife habitats in general. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave me some feedback and let me know what you think. Thanks again.